All right, guys, welcome to the review of the DK300 Plus from Milad. Yes, this bike was given to me by Milad. It is a manufacturer's bike that they sent out for free to me, but they did not pay me for this review. They're not paying me to give it a sparkling review or anything like that. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on this bike. Going back to the price point, at $999, it's a really great value in my opinion. So you have the dual suspension, you have the 20 amp hour battery, you have the phone mount, you have hydraulic disc brakes that are very plush, you have the 20 inch by four inch fat tires so you can go almost anywhere, and you have a 750 watt motor that has 1200 watts peak. The other thing to remember is you have integrated brakes. So if I squeeze this handle here, you're gonna see that light kind of like flash there. So when you have your lights on, it flashes. And if you don't have your lights on, so say I come over here and turn my headlights off. Okay, now it's, there's no lights on. When I squeeze the, the handle, it, it flashes, but it turns on. So when the lights are on, it'll flash to let you know to let people know you're braking if there's no lights on when you squeeze that throttle it'll light up and then if you hold those brakes it'll flash so overall i'm really liking the bike again 20 amp hour 48 volt battery dual suspension really cool front headlight let me turn that halo front headlight on there and again you have the low beam and you also have the high beam as well really cool 12 watt LED light there in the front, front and rear fenders, and all of this comes with the bike for just $9.99. They say this gets up to 100 miles of range under pedal assist and gets 50 miles under just electric only. Now, if you want more range than that, you can get the second battery, which is the DK300 Pro versus this is the DK300 Plus model. You can get that extra battery. It's $1,200 total for two batteries, dual suspension, hydraulic disc brakes, 28 mile per hour top speed. To me, really great value. The seat is really comfortable. I've been liking sitting on it so far. We'll see how I feel at the end of the video. Power bar goes all the way up here. You have your battery meter, which is six bars and your five meters, five bars of assist. So you can change that down to, you know, off. One, two, three, four, or five and you got your odometer and your, and your speed. You can also toggle there between your trip odometer, your vol, which is, and your cur, which I don't know, voltage and current maybe. So voltage is 50.5 volts, really cool. And your current right now is nothing, obviously. And then you have your elapsed time as well. And then back to your odometer. So really cool setup. I like the look of the bike overall with the all black and a couple red accents here and there. Again, you have your compression adjustment here, battery meter built in. I really think it's a great looking bike. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the bike. It's interesting how it's got that really open center part, especially without that second battery right there. Let me know in the comments where you're from. If you live in California, where I live, I live in Northern California here. This is Folsom Lake. Let me know where you live. If you live outside of the United States or inside the United States in a different area, let me know where you live and what kind of bike you ride. So now let's keep on riding this thing. We're gonna do a top speed test. We're gonna do some braking tests and we're gonna find out how well the suspension holds up. Now, one thing I did want to mention really quickly was when I first started riding, I was hearing a little bit of rattling coming from back here in this rear fender. And I got, you know, into looking at it and figuring out what it was. The screws were tight. What was happening was this edge of the metal um, support was hitting the fender itself. And so all I did was kind of with my hands, I sort of just squeezed the fender just a little bit to kind of bring that fender away from the edge of this support and i don't know if you can see there there's a little tiny gap of light now between that it was just kind of rattling against it and i just sort of bent it out a little bit and now there's no rattle so if you buy this bike and you have a little bit of rattle coming from that rear fender just give it a little squeeze in the back 
and it'll fix the problem, which is great. Now, oftentimes I do take off my fenders on my bikes because I don't ride in very much mud or rain, and I just don't really like the way they look. But like on a day like today, even where it's not raining and there's water still on the trail, it is nice to have that protection from those fenders. And so I don't always want to take I don't always want to take off the fenders, but a lot of times it just kind of seems to make sense um, just because there's so much rattling and noise coming from them and I don't usually need them. And I don't really like the way they make bikes look, but they do serve a purpose and I can understand that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit up my one of my favorite spots here. I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorite spot to go to, which is little a lot of flies out today we got a little dirt on the brake rotor there it's one of my favorite places to stop i'm gonna let these joggers go by this is just such a beautiful area i mean check this out guys and i know i do this trail a lot in my videos but it's one of my favorites and i like to consistently test these bikes out and make sure that they all perform the same in the same environment. And so I will be taking these bikes out on different trails and going along the American River into different locations to test the total range at, you know, pedal assist one or two or full throttle out to see how long the battery will last in those two conditions. So stay tuned for those videos as well. Guys, check out the clouds today too. I'm not sure if it's coming out in the camera, but just unbelievable. It looks like a picture here. It looks like some sort of painting or some amazing photo that's going on. Just a beautiful day. I gotta admit, you guys, I'm really liking having this phone holder here. It's a great way for me to keep track of people that are trying to get a hold of me while I'm out riding. It's not something I usually pay attention to, and I don't have to watch it, and I don't have to, but it's nice to be able to listen to like music or you know get an incoming text message that's important. It's just really nice to have that front and center and securely mounted to where you don't have it in your pocket and it gives you a little more room for you know different items in your pocket or just to not have something in your pocket while you're pedaling. I've never really bought an aftermarket phone holder for many of my bikes because I don't really particularly care I guess to have that but having one is actually really convenient and i like this one because it tightens up all you have to do is tighten the screw here and it really holds it in there tight with some rubber sides all right we're coming up to this really big hill here it's not something that i would think a bike like this would be able to tackle very easily it's not even something i would really try very often i usually walk up this but i'm in the high gear now and it is going up it's just <laughs> some of these ruts are like I mean, really, really deep here and just not very passable. So if you find yourself in this situation, the cool thing this bike has, like many others nowadays, is if you hold the bottom button down for three seconds, it puts it into a walk mode to where you don't have to do anything. The motor just walks the bike up the hill at about three miles an hour. So as long as you're holding that down or negative button down, it'll walk the bike up the hill for you. You just hold on to the handles and it kind of makes your walk really easy and gives you a stable, don't wanna go back down, makes your walk up the hill really easy and a stable option. And it also kind of supports you. So as you're walking up a really steep hill, it gives you something to hold on to that's pulling you up the hill. If you look closely, you can kind of see my trail where I just came up and how rutted it is. If you take the right course and you have enough speed and enough gearing, you can go up it pretty easy. Guys, I gotta say, if I had to, and I'm not just saying this because they gave me the bike, if I bought this bike and spent $1,000 on it, I'd be really happy. All right, we're coming up to the end of the trail here where the boat ramp dock is. And when we get there, we're gonna do some brake testing to make sure we can lock up the brakes and lock up the wheels. That's very important. If you can't skid the tires, if you can't lock up the wheel, 
then you don't have enough braking power for your bike usually. Especially with e-bikes because they're heavier and they can go faster. You want to make sure that your brakes have that much power. Now with these hydraulic disc brakes, 170 millimeters, I don't anticipate any issues doing that. But like I said, it's something that I think is really important for your bike. Top speed is important, but just as important as your braking. All right, kind of pedal to help us get up to speed here. And then throttling only, can we get up to 28 miles per hour? Let's see, 23, 24, 25, I'm gonna crouch down, 26, 26 and a half, 27, All right, so we're hitting 27.1 under throttle only with a guy that's six foot three, 225 to 235 pounds. That's pretty respectable, I gotta say. Now, the next thing I wanna test is how fast can it go with pedaling? Because with pedaling, you always get a little bit higher top speed usually because you're helping that motor. So I'm gonna pedal really fast. There's definitely some ghost pedaling if you don't pedal hard. So we're at 27. 27.5, 27.6, 27.28. All right, so we definitely are able to get 20 miles per hour on a flat parking lot. You do have to pedal pretty hard. Again, I'm really tall at six foot three, so my legs are kind of going up and down with the way these pedals are mounted and the smaller tires and the frame size. If you're not as tall as I am, you probably would be a little more comfortable pedaling, but you're still able to go 27.1 miles per hour under throttle only and you're able to go 28 miles an hour with pedaling. I'm gonna do a test that I've done on all my other e-bikes, which is I'm gonna get up to full speed here and I'm gonna go up this hill, which is very, very steep. It's a boat loading ramp. I'm gonna go up it full throttle and I wanna see how does it do going up here? What speed does it go down to? 21, 20, 18, 17, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 miles an hour at the very top, 9.9, .9, 10 miles an hour. So pretty good. All right, you guys, now I'm gonna do a test on this bike that I always do, and I do it in this location, which is the braking test. Well, no issues with locking up those tires, obviously. Now, I don't recommend doing that. You know, if you stop like that too often, you'll start to wear the tread unevenly off your tires and have flat spots. You don't want to stop like that, but like I said, you want to be able to have the ability to stop quickly and being able to lock up the tires is one way to know that you're going to have the maximum stopping power at your fingertips whenever you need it. I really like these daytime running headlights. I think that's just so cool. For a thousand bucks, guys, I don't think you can really go wrong with this bike. I haven't found any issues with it. Time will tell. I'll keep the bike and do a bunch of different tests with it. Like I said, long range and other durability tests with the bike as well to find out if it's able to hold up over the long run. But I haven't found an issue with it yet that I haven't liked. I'm going to go ahead and test the horn out. <laughs> That's an interesting sound. That's kind of cool because, you know, a normal horn is so loud and kind of obnoxious. All right, we're going to go down this hill here. I'm going to throttle only and we're going to see what speed we can get this bike up to. It's at 28, 29, 30, 30.3 30 miles an hour down that hill. I had to kind of stand up to get that into the camera. I don't know if it showed. So that definitely adds a lot of uh, wind resistance. Now that I'm bent over, we're at 31.7. I'm gonna bend over a little bit to build up speed. We hit 31.7 miles per hour down that hill there. Pretty impressive. I have some bugs hitting me. <laughs> and at this speed, it, you know, you can feel them when they hit you. Um, man, I really like this bike, guys. Um, and like I said, I'm not just saying that, it's just, it's a well put together bike. It's got great components. It does what it says it's gonna do. It goes the speeds it says it's gonna go. Uh, the suspension is, is fairly, I don't wanna say it's plush, but it's very controlled. It's not loose, it's not jangling, it's not clanging, it's not too soft, it's not too hard. It feels just right. 
So check the link in the description box below. And like I said, if you haven't already liked this video and commented and subscribed to the channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.